everybody. So this week on our video, if you're paying attention, you know what we're going to talk about if you've been following along. If not, drum roll please. So today we're going to talk about the Guardian Link 3 transmitter. Um, I have a semi-dirty Guardian Link 3 transmitter here. Um, it was requested. Somebody asked how I personally clean my transmitter. So I have a um, a spare one so this is it um, it's the dirtiest my current one that I'm wearing is not very dirty so I was gonna make this video earlier with that one but it's not really dirty so I found this one it has some adhesive and stuff to, on it so um, let's kind of dive in and talk about what comes in the Medtronic Guardian Link 3 transmitter box so you're gonna get a Surter so the way this functions is when you open a sensor which looks like this it's kind of like this little towery thing. So the pointy part goes through the hole and then you'll push down on a flat surface to insert the sensor in here. So it'll go in a lot like that. And um, then it has some little spots on the bottom for you to place your finger, I'm trying to get to where you guys can see this. Right here, like these legs, you'll place your fingers on it and then pull up and that'll leave just the, the, the sensor itself in here. And you just place it on your skin, wherever you want it. I slowly apply pressure. It'll fire. You'll remove this part. Take the little needle part here. It'll automatically retract out. There is a piece of adhesive under the bottom that you need to remove. I remove it beforehand just because that suggestion was made to me by somebody else. So I remove it while it's in here. And then I don't have to worry about accidentally pulling the sensor out. So there's you a tip trip in a trick and then um once you get just the sensor on you're going to use your medtronic supplied tape and apply one piece then put the transmitter on attach the little adhesive in the back and then apply your second piece of tape so back to what comes in the box you get your sensor inserter use your transmitter charger you'll get a transmitter and you get these little green things so we'll talk about the little green things in a second so what you're going to typically use on every day will or every week will be the asserter, the charger, and your transmitter. So I'm going to cover up the last couple digits of this, but you can see your transmitter number here. Sorry, it's backwards I'm using my front facing camera. Um, so you'll need that number to help the pairing process for your um, pump. But it's pretty simple. All it is is your transmitter slides in the charger. You're going to get the little green light. It'll slowly stop blinking and that means it's fully charged. If your battery in the charger is low or it has some sort of fault, there's a little red light that'll blink here. And if you get nothing at all, there's a good chance the battery in the charger is dead. With that being said, the transmitter charger takes a AAA battery and the Medtronic 770G, all of the Medtronic pumps that I've ever used take a AA battery. Um, so, takes about 45 minutes to an hour for it to fully charge. I know that's a complaint for some people, um, but yeah, anyway, that's kind of my experience with this. So um, I'm going to remove it. And if you remove it, you can see the light turned solid green. I'm going to try to turn this light off to see as you can see. It might not blink. It might be dead. But there's a green light right here on the back side of the transmitter that will start blinking, meaning that the transmitter is good to go. Um, it's not good to go because it's not been used in a while, so the battery is probably completely dead on it. So, I'm um, going to kind of skip to how I clean. So, if you want to use a liquid, um, you can use Gooby Gone, which is an adhesive remover. You can get alcohol swabs that have adhesive re remover chemicals in them. Anything that you can use like that, I would recommend you use one of the little green testers or a um, the tip of an old sensor. Like if you just remove the sensor when you're trying to take it apart, you can rip all the adhesive off and leave that tip in there on the top of the transmitter. And when you do that, you're creating that waterproof seal. So if you're gonna be manipulating it and cleaning it and stuff like that with chemicals and liquids, you're gonna wanna keep that waterproof because if water gets in here, then it's gonna mess up your transmitter. But if you don't have the part of the sensor, you can use one of these. You can see they have the little O-ring on them. So I'm gonna open one just to kind of show you guys. So it just pops on and it locks in there and it gives you a good thing to kind of hold on to with your transmitter. 
Um, so this one little piece right here is just some adhesive that I can pull off. It's kind of like tape. I just kind of scratch it with my fingernail and work it up. See, I can pull that off. And that kind of cleans off most of the center part there. Um, but you can see that there is a lot of adhesive buildup. Let me try to get it to focus. Um, a lot of adhesive buildup around the edges. So what I personally like to do is to just take my thumb and kind of just rub it. If you take your thumb and you apply some pressure and you just rub it, typically that adhesive will start to roll and move and you can just work like a, kind of like some pizza dough and you're just kind of like rubbing it out. Work that adhesive to the very edge and then once it's at the very edge, you can roll it and it'll come off. That's just my personal, it's how I've always done it, just so I don't constantly have to put chemicals and stuff on it because I don't want anything to kind of stick on here and then cause problems where my adhesive doesn't want to stick. But you can use those other things and that's totally fine, it's, it's your preference. But between my fingernails and me just kind of rubbing on it, I can typically get most of this adhesive off of here relatively easily without any problems. And you don't have to do it all and make it all perfect um, every week. Typically with me, when I clean them, I clean them, I, they get dirtier mostly during the summer months where it is hot. Um, we do have a high humidity down here in Louisiana and I sweat a lot outside. So I just try to like work on it and get most of this off. And then as you can kind of tell, it's uh, looking pretty good already, and it's just a couple minutes working with it. There's still some spots that are kind of hard, which, like I said, you can, you know, get some adhesive remover and kind of work with that with a paper towel or something and kind of work on it. Um, but for the most part, um, that's how I typically clean it. Now, you can see it does have a little bit of, like, glunk in there. With You can get, like, a Q-tip with a little bit of water on it and kind of work that. You Be careful, though. You don't want to go in that um, center part. Um, so I'm going to let this transmitter kind of charge a little bit and see if I can revive it because it was an older one. Um, the next thing that I get asked a lot, um, how is the sensor accuracy? So the easiest way that I feel that I can do that is to kind of show you guys what my blood sugar is reading on my pump. So let me get in the pump. So I am in auto mode and I'm reading a blood glucose of 142. Sorry, it is inverted. Like I said, I use the front facing camera most of the time. And then I have my provided AccuCheck guide link meter. Um, I did order this uh, meter case thing off of Amazon. I believe it's for the Omnipod Dash, but it works well for my AccuCheck guide. I keep a couple of the, the little keepers for my infusion set in case for any reason I need to remove it. Um, some extra batteries, some lancets, my vial of insulin, meter test strips, the lancing device, and I keep a paper towel just to kind of wipe my finger on um, after um, I prick it to get that extra blood off, and then I typically have a Purell wipe. So let's check my sugar and see what it is. Now it has been about four or five hours since I did my morning calibration this morning. Um, I woke up at about 10 and it's currently three. So there is a little, let me pull this off. So my blood sugar now is 129 and the pump was reading 142. So for me, I feel like that's normal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna calibrate my pump since I just checked my finger, check my sugar, 129. And so I'm classifying that as normal because my sugar is within, um, I believe the marginal of error. Um, it's only 13 points away from what the sensor was reading. And if you've been following long, or if you haven't, I'll explain. Um, your blood sugar is always gonna be different from your sensor. The If the sensor and the blood sugar are um, the same, then your blood sugar is extremely stable and you don't have any like insulin working or um, uh, like food going into your system currently. Um, that's the way I, I, I look at it. Um, I did um, eat about an hour and a half ago. Um, I had, I'm still doing my diet. 
Um, so I did have a couple of crackers. It's only really carbs, programmed for about 10 grams of carbs. And my pump gave me a, a, a couple of units of insulin for that. So um, the way I typically explain it and the way I think that makes more sense, your blood in your veins is like an interstate system um, and it provides um, glucose to your body. So you have your, your, your main areas where you have your blood and then your interstitial fluid on the very outside, some rural areas um, typically don't have as much, uh, best way, they typically, there's a difference there. So if your blood sugar is extremely high and there's a lot of glucose going through your body and your veins, then all of your cells are gonna to try to take in that glucose. So typically your interstitial fluid could be a little behind or it could be um, a little above, it just kind of depends. If your body's, your blood sugar is extremely low, there's not a lot of uh, sugar glucose in your um, blood system, then your interstitial fluid could be a little higher because they're, it's trying to hold on um, to what glucose it does have. It's, it's very, it varies. The point it being is your sensor data could be about 15 minutes behind your actual blood glucose, just because it takes time for that glucose to get out of your bloodstream into your interstitial fluid and then kind of back and forth. Um, so hope that makes sense. Sensor accuracy depends on a couple different things. Number one is your sensor placement. Medtronic approves the Guardian Link sensor to be used on the outer arm and the abdomen area, kind of around the love, hand, uh, love handles is what I've been told. I um, have a belly, there's a lot of movement in my abdomen, so typically the sensors don't stay on. So 80% of the time, my sensor is here on my arm typically on the same side as uh, my pump. I try to keep them on the same side to help um, not have any communication issues between the pump in my pocket and the sensor on my arm. So I rotate back and forth. Um, that's a mark. But as you can see, besides this little mole thing here, um, I typically don't have any scarring. Uh, I did have some pain with my sensor last week here. I put it a little too high on my arm. Um, it was some irritation. Typically that will go away after the first day, um, but it's up to you. If it's um, um, unbearable, remove the sensor. You can fill out a, a, a form online or call Medtronic and they can send you a replacement sensor. Um, that's 100% okay. You can do that. Um, so that way you didn't just totally waste that sensor. Yes, you're not gonna have it a new one for a week or two, but you can go ahead and get that processed. So sensor accuracy is a major thing. The next is your body's hydration. The sensor uses interstitial fluid, which is the fluid that's like in our layers of skin, um, not necessarily your blood. So you have to keep your body hydrated. Um, if you drink a lot of Cokes or stuff like that, not a lot of water, um, your body's not gonna be as hydrated. Um, I've started drinking Powerade and Gatorade Zeros. Um, there's no carbs or anything in those that's gonna affect your blood sugar. It's a good source of electrolytes and things of that. And then I try to drink a boo koodle of water as well. That just helps overall sensor accuracy. Then the final step for the best sensor accuracy is the time of day for when you calibrate your sensor. You don't want to calibrate your sensor if your blood sugar is rising or dropping rapidly because by the time the pump processes that blood sugar, so let's say I, um, I just ate and now I'm gonna calibrate, which is something that you shouldn't do. So if I just ate and my blood sugar is starting to spike and I have 145 with double arrows going up and I check my sugar and it's 155, by the time the pump processes that blood glucose of 155, your blood sugar is probably actually up in towards 170 or higher and it's gonna cause that gap between your sensor data and your blood glucose level to be off. So you wanna calibrate when you know that your blood sugars are stable. So most people will calibrate in the morning before breakfast, after they've got up and got going, um, if your blood sugar stays stable. If you're one of those people who typically has what's called dawn phenomena, so when you wake up, your blood sugar 
um, spikes, you don't want to calibrate that time. You want to try to make it to where once your blood sugars are stable and you've gotten started with your morning, then you want to calibrate. So that way you can try to do your calibrations um, when your blood sugar is the most stable and try to get your most accuracy out of your, your sensor. So that's kind of an overview um, of the sensor. I will post several screenshots um, on different sides showing um, times where I've checked my sugar and I've looked at my pump and I've taken pictures because they've been very close. Um, I try to stride for my pump sensor value and my uh, glucose reading to be within 20 points of each other. I think that's really well. Sometimes they're tighter than that. They're less than 10. Sometimes they're right on top of each other. Like I said, practice makes perfect. Everybody's body is different. You have to kind of experiment, find out what works best for you. And once you found that, you can kind of tune it in and really get on top of it and make those changes to master the system. So I hope this video helps. Um, if you guys have any questions about the 770G um, at all, let me know and I will see you guys on next week. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next time.